It is Tuesday, June 23rd. What Gunurado Zuego, Joe Dalaron Jets, welcome to the COVID 19 Task Force Daily Update. On today's program, we'll have some special guests who are making their debut on the daily update. And we also have an update on the uh, fire situation here. It has been uh, really tough for the Gahnawaga Fire Brigade in the last couple of days. David Scott will be here. But we'd like to start off the program with a bit of a follow-up from yesterday's announcements from the Cattery Memorial Hospital Center. And here with that is the Executive Director, Lisa Westaway. Thank you. So I wanted to give some update about decisions that were made regarding inpatient at uh, Cattery Memorial Hospital Center. So if you recall, yesterday we spoke about new directives that came in on Friday. Uh, new directives regarding palliative care, regarding uh, visitation, um, regarding dining in the dining area and activities in different uh, types of facilities. So I, um, we had a big discussion, both medical and uh, clinical today regarding these new directives and so I wanted to bring uh, that information to you directly. Um, so if you recall visitation has already started at KMHC albeit a little bit differently than what you are used to. Uh, we are have started it's been two days now that we've had visits uh, inside the hospital in a in a separate room off of inpatient. Uh, so new directives from Quebec uh, like we've spoken about in the past, we try to uh, assess based on our own needs and in most cases we've always been a little bit more cautious than Quebec has been. So for visitation, uh, we're going to maintain visitation the way it's organized right now. So meaning uh, by appointment and uh, the Quebec guidelines state visitation by appointment two people at a time, so exactly as we're organized now. Um, but they, uh, Quebec is uh, stating that they are allowing visits to happen in the patient's room. So this is a difference uh, that we are uh, not implementing visits in the patient's room. We are maintaining the visits in a separate location. So right now we have two possible locations. There's an indoor uh, space in the area that we were using during expansion, so the old pharmacy area and we have an outdoor location in the back of the hospital. As soon as the front courtyard is finished we'll have a second outdoor location and then we'll be able to increase the amount of visits during a day uh, so that it's not just one patient at a time but for the time being uh, that's how we're organized and it's really to start off slowly. The idea is to put the process in place, evaluate how it's going and then be able to uh, increase as time goes by. So for the time being we're going to maintain visits as they are. So we have scheduled uh, I think with most families throughout this week up until uh, the weekend and then we'll be uh, evaluating the process afterwards and then moving forward with rescheduling. So from what I hear uh, the visits have been going very well and I really thank you for your patience. I know it's not easy to see your loved ones and to be at such a distance from them after all of this time but uh, we really we really thank you. Everyone is really taking precautions and uh, implementing implementing all the measures so that we ensure safety collectively for all. So, um, so that's uh, with respect to visitation. So there are new directives as well for palliative care. I expect again a, re, a revision of those directives because the palliative care uh, documents came out before the visitation. But just to let you know, um, the Quebec documents now allow again two visitors at a time for end of life visits. So these are people whose death is imminent. Um, so two people at a time, up to a maximum of four people per 24-hour period. So we've modified that somewhat considering uh, communities uh, expression of need uh, to really uh, have large family members and we, we see this over the past how we grieve is really by all of family being present at once and so we've increased the maximum uh, possibility per day so per 24 hour period to eight people um, with very specific directives in place of course of uh, monitoring symptoms um, anybody with symptoms of course cannot come into the building and these visits are happening in the patient's room. 
So I'm not giving you all the details about the safety precautions in place, but I would just like to assure you that although these directives, um, although we've put these directives in place, we do it with the utmost precaution. And, uh, and so we are allowing up to eight people, again, only two people at a time. And we're now able allowing um, those children under 14 to also come in if they're accompanied by an adult. So uh, those are some, some positive changes and uh, I know it's been a really, really difficult time over the past few months uh, for many who have not been able to grieve uh, as they would have wanted to. And, and of course, we, we were sorry about that. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't change the decisions that were made and that had to be made at that time for safety reasons. But as we loosen up measures, we feel that we're able to make these changes po uh, in a positive way, both for visitation and for uh, palliative care visits. Um, so another, um, another change in the directives is with respect to uh, mealtime, eating in the dining room. So as you're aware, uh, residents have been, those who do not require assistance in feeding have been eating their meals in their rooms. Of course, this is not how we want to function on a regular basis because it really increases uh, isolation and decreases socialization. Um, so we're just in the process now of putting a plan in place that will ensure that our residents will be able to eat in the dining room, those who want to, and we've started asking residents what they want. Um, so those who want to while respecting uh, physical distancing. Um, and we're going to be following the same model that the Elders Lodge has implemented, which was really well done. And so we'll, we'll just, um, have, uh, will start very slowly again and then increase over time, always respecting physical distancing within the dining room, but this will allow better socialization for residents. Uh, in the same uh, way, there's also um, kind of a, under the same umbrella are the increase in activities. So as, you're, as you know, we've been doing many activities one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. We've had some group activities, but very, very small groups. Uh, and so we're now able to increase uh, the amount of people within an activity group as long, again, as we're respecting physical distancing. So those are, that's also something that we're... Uh, going to be working on and implementing very soon. Um, so those are the major uh, changes, I guess, that, that have uh, come about as a result of the change in directives. Some we're more cautious about than what Co uh, Quebec has suggested. Some we're a little bit more lenient about, and it's all really based on uh, good medical uh, practice, on safety precautions, and also on the idea of quality of life. And what we see and what we've assessed in making these decisions is what's happening around us. So we see that cases are very low. New cases in Quebec and Gunawage are non-existent at the present time, so we have zero active cases. Um, we know uh, that there are very few people that are coming in for testing at the testing site. In fact, zero yesterday and maybe I think only one the day before. So it's very few people. So we're in a position where we're able to make these decisions. Of course, they're based on very uh, the necessity to maintain safe practices. So it's really really important for families of residents to maintain all the safety precautions that they've diligently put in place over the past few months, meaning physical distancing, staying home when you're sick, uh, safe hygiene practices, um, you know, limiting your contacts as much as possible. All of those things need to continue for us to be able to maintain this loosening up of measures over time. Um, so the last thing that I want to discuss is the Zoom meeting. So last week I had mentioned that we sent a letter to families to, uh, to be able to participate in a Zoom meeting Thursday night at 6 o'clock. And it's an opportunity for you to express yourselves, for us to hear what you have to say, for you to tell us what you think your loved ones would want should we be faced with this situation of... Uh, becoming more strict again in the future with a second wave. We really want to hear from you. We haven't received many RSVPs, only two, in fact. So uh, either um, 
you've forgotten or you haven't picked up your mail. Uh, we're pr we're going to try to reach out by phone, but I urge you to check your check out your mailboxes and uh, let us know if you're able to participate because it will allow us to better plan uh, better plan the meeting so that we can ensure to hear everything that you have to say. Uh, so um, that's it for today. Um, just a, a little mention that there are new directives also for the Elders Lodge and for ILC, and they. Uh, so I, sp I have spoken with Derek and. He's, uh, they're also working on the implementation of directives uh, and really you know, figuring out how that would work for them and the needs of their residents. So I expect that you'll hear from them shortly. Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Lisa. And uh, again, there's always news here in Ghanawaga from the uh, COVID-19 task force. And uh, some of that today is, is very good news. So that's, that's good. Um, on the not so good news side, uh, over the past few days, the Gantanawaga Fire Brigade has been very busy, basically when they shouldn't have been. It has been extremely hot. And uh, joining us on the program to talk about uh, the current situation in Gantanawaga is the Fire Brigade's Chief, David Scott. Dave? Thanks, Joe. I just want to mention a few things to uh, community members. Um, I'll refer to my notes as I go along. I guess uh, the first thing we need to discuss is the weather patterns that have been changing uh, through the years. We've all noticed that the weather pa patterns have been changing. The weather is becoming hotter. The weather is becoming drier. Uh, we at the fire brigade have noticed that we've had an increase over the years in brush fires. Now. In the later years, those brush fires have turned into forest fires. We had a major forest fire last year uh, behind the survival school that uh, required us to contact the provincial forest firefighting agency to request uh, water bombers to help us control it. Luckily, we got it to the point where we uh, were able to cancel the water bombers just after they had passed Quebec City on their way to Ganawage. So the weather right now is extreme. The fire hazard right now in Ganawaga is extreme. The fire hazard in Doncaster is extreme. I've been asked to explain. I think there's a little bit of confusion about what the restrictions are in Ganawage. And there are restrictions. We understand that people want to sit outside and have small bonfires at their home. We're okay with that. You need to have a hose. You need to have a fire extinguisher. You need to make sure that your fire is totally out when you're finished for the evening. And it's never left unattended. Doncaster, on the other hand, is a different beast entirely. We have no equipment up there. We would take a while to get up there to, to assess what's happening. And with the extreme conditions that are going on, it would be a major conflagration. There is a total fire ban in Doncaster at the moment. These conditions can change in days. Unfortunately for us, this extreme heat that we've been having has lasted five or six days or longer. The, the weather conditions can be lowered to low or, or high, depending on the rain that we're going to get. And believe me, the firemen are waiting for the rain pattern, the rain to start. We've had a major fire last Wednesday on the other side of the uh, tunnel in the uh, checkpoint area. Uh, luckily, we caught it in time and we were able to save the homeowner's house. Um, a momentary lapse of judgment in that case uh, caused a, a small grass fire to get out of hand and it required that 28 firemen and paramedics to be called in to deal with it over the course of three hours and then another hour of cleanup afterwards. Uh, the high heat and humidity required the firemen to be moved in and out of the fire areas every 15 to 20 minutes so that they could pass through the rehab and be assessed by the ambulance technicians. So this took a long time for us to extinguish. These kind of fires are becoming more commonplace. We don't need fire set. There were fires set on the island this weekend. The officer in charge on the island. Fires were set in five or six different places at the same time. This is not nature that's starting this. This is negligence and it's stupidity. This, this needs to stop. So if you know somebody's doing that, you can either talk to them and tell them they need to cut it or you can report them. It, it, we need to stop this. Pulling, pull, uh, my guys are respecting social distancing. They're staying home so that they can serve the community but social distancing in fire situations go out the window, and I do not wish to expose them to, to, to meaningless things like that. Um, 
I'm asking the community um, to respect the restrictions in place in Ganawage. We do not want to have to put a total fire ban in place. We would rather work with the community to control everything that's going on. No grass fires, no fireworks, whether it's for St. Jean-Baptiste or Canada Day. I don't know. <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> no burning cardboard, no burning debris, no burning grass, no burning brush. If you want to sit in your backyard and have a small campfire, totally, by all means, go for it. Make sure you have the means to extinguish it if it gets out of hand. Um, so in the last week, in the last week, we've had five or six grass fires that turned into major brush fires that required all call out to the firemen. Um, just, just be careful, be aware. You don't need to burn. You don't need to set fireworks off. You don't need to burn your brush. You don't need to burn anything. It doesn't make anything greener in the long run. I right, thank you for your time. Sene seriosa, dano watsaskogo. Yeah, David. And uh, as we've uh, talked about in the past uh, couple of days, big fires in the Saint uh, Lac Saint Jean region, huge fires, bigger than all of Montreal Island. And um, you know, Joe Rodo's in the same position. Me? It's the same. They're in the same boat. Uh, fire happens. There's no way to shut it out. So, don't fool around with this, folks. And uh, please be respectful. I know one of the firefighters, um, who I know very well. Um, had to jump in the pool, not for relaxation after the fire, but to cool down because it's so hot these last few days. And inside the uh, firefighting uh, uh, paraphernalia they have to use, it was just uh, terrible. So be careful out there. Well, joining us on the program today, we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the program that we'd have uh, a debut. And these... Uh, our next guests are uh, very popular here in Ghanawage. They've been around for several years. They have their own <laughs> television program. I'm talking about Duda Dano Okwari, who are uh, part of the Ganyalkahaga Ungwana Rajjoka Cultural Center. They've been uh, promoting language uh, for, for, it's got to be at least a dozen years and maybe more. Uh, anytime there's a parade in Ghanawage, they're in the parade. And here during the, uh, you know, the, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, well, they've had to keep busy too, like everyone else, and we're going to uh, welcome them, them to the program. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Duda Danu Okwari, how are you? Hey, uh, I'm glad we have both both of you on because I know we had some technical problems there for a moment but uh, it's good to have you great to have you on the program today uh, first of all let's let's ask the simplest question how has life changed for Duda Dano Okwari? Oh well Ha <laughs> Tony <laughs> O stumha ngwondora ze age yarde gene da gatso harde 20 seconds ni gariwes onakti da gatso harde wa kehrori isa azi chanta gayeri wis cook seconds ni gariwes da gatso harde nekti wa unget ni guraya dasta zi ni ori hoana dano nu jere zi onakti zangari wes zuhake da gatso harde 
Neni oni wage redzi ezo. Nekci. Aha wage ni gohrayonda nezi ni gari hoda ne giga gahradarines COVID-19. Oksak unge ni gohrayonda nezi agayat na genha ne agwe. Yanere ayede wang de rundake daye de wazohare danu wadogak na tade waderahek na agwe. O yu gayat na genha. Can hard us a cat nyaza a quadire nexi, walk at the yonder, the unqueni to a nudgere, known a gee on what do heads there. On a tia da musa da de giga task force, no ho de yuki rori, tanu, the de wajat again ha. Wagatsunu ni hakwe zahuniru zi yahta de do hun zahu and gadeli waya stana zi niore oya yun sosera de. Next zi dakadasua kea diz again and wadoro sua. Dun yu gedi hunyoni oni. Gatsune, FaceTime, Zoom, hage Skype even. De guatar and wadoro next zi yahne saga de gane atste a guat kiritseruni. Doske. Wadu sahiga o kwari, a guata ora gunona rot ni staha yuka, a yuki hawita, a gue gutino hoda de wagada hunzoni danu ayokenu de. A gue gu yeno haresne, a yuguata gari dege. Ha! Kea de rodaxi, yerake one news danu gayaragu, yen de wia dunyus duda a gori huage. Yeah, do I get Niku Hayan down? No Jera to Niagoyera next the Satan Crori, the Nizi de Werenius Night Ganhra Oxak Yahakewe. Mm-hmm. Hatsky Joe. Just have to kind of wind you up and you just roll. <laughs> well, it's great. <laughs> it's it's uh it's great to know you're following all the directives and uh you know doing all the things you're supposed to be doing. Now Beside the things that you need to do, what are some of the things that have been keeping you busy to have a little fun, for, for example? Oh, <laughs> Quah eager zero yat the stairs. Tanu, as were just to the nega de rorox. Nexi, ya de wagawia detta ne oni zi suwatarani. Got the rorox oni zi no hold the yori was a nexi yahne jogude. As a gaza wajera sa gets honige a gat cato, tinia wa hajes ne ziunzade. Wahi o quarry. Ha. Okni ezo ye gat kahri tsurunis natste. Yunja a kiena waze o tenak de hana dunzoni. Ungodoro su a ye gat kahri ta oni. Video games. Next ya suti de gari was ta ta gat kari de danu. Nek nana anksa zina hada ista a yungeni wanunduni. Wahi gazi yun weza ne atste a sese gad danu a yeti ga ungwe su a. Rona tahi dake danu ruti huizere. A guego o di yesu danu te hadinat sadenihu. Si rune, ara haja zina hoda yu wado heads to haje, ne ganadago, segu yu guatsa nuni ne gaa. Ne giga auri wa zini genurunkwane unguanada, nona tena kwandore di yu wado heads tanyu, skatne, tonda wado heads de. Kwanak oksa de wagadu hunzani a a a kehrori ne gaya dio nyawa zi yankiena waze. Nyawa gaya dio. Ha, nyawa kowa zi nigu washata genha. Tanu, de wagadu hunzani a kehrori ne unguanada zi yungwa sat de gana wagahronu. Tanu watski owa dohets de. Ze waya suhak, ze watsohare danu. Ze wat de rung da wahi. Ha, a guegu de wat sats de. Nek onik zi on de wat sats de ge. Danu da ye de wat dat shnyana ni ore on dohets de. Yung guan arun kwa un guanada, danu guan arun kwa ze wa guegu. 
Ona, Kiwahi. Ona, Joe. Ona. Ona. Ona, Zawagwego. Yeah, well, that was excellent and uh, so nice of them to join us on this hot day. It's got to be even warmer when you're made of fur. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that'll uh, wrap it up for today's program. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it was great to have you join us. We have an, actually a, a special little treat as we leave, uh, leave you here today because we have the world premiere of the Duda Dano Okwari video. So uh, enjoy yourselves. We shall see you tomorrow. Dr. Goche should be here tomorrow. So we have another interesting program for you. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take it away, Duda Dano Okwari.